Thank you very much. I was already starting our conversation off the air. Let's do it on the air. Senator David Lionhelm is the Liberal Democrat Senator in New South Wales and he joins us here on a Friday night to chat about things that are bigger than just news of the day. Senator, good evening to you. Thank you, Paul. All right. Now, the nanny state. I know that you hate it. It's one of the reasons you ran for Parliament and, uh, and one of the reasons I think libertarianism has got a, 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 big, uh, a big future ahead of it. Mm -hmm. But give us an idea. When we talk about the nanny state, it, it seems to have had a, 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 um, a popularised version and then there's how it manifests itself. What do you judge examples of the nanny state to be? Well, in, in modern terms, it's, it's definition has changed a little bit over time, but in modern terms it's basically the government um, making decisions for you, um, for your own good, and especially when they use the, the coercive powers of the government and say, well, if you don't do them for your own good, we're going to prosecute you. You're going to, you know, you're going to get convicted. So um, it's, a, it's a direct opposite of John Stuart Mill's harm principle that the only role of government is to prevent harm to other people. So it's, it's about harm to yourself. So it's not about hurting other people. It's harm to yourself. And when you're the only person that's likely to be hurt, the government still says, no, you're not allowed to do that. Because it, it, it feels that... I don't know, past 10 years in particular, there's been this real acceleration in if there's a problem, government will find itself to put its hand up to solve it. Mm. Is, is, is that an expectation the public has placed on government or government has suddenly tricked us into... Yeah. Well, politicians have a, a sort of a, a feeling that they ought to do something mm. and so they cast around for something to do. And I, one of the fr refreshing things I found about most politicians, there are a few exceptions, is that they actually don't think they know everything. <laughs> but they do think there are people out there who do. So they go and ask people, well, you know, what should we do here? And there's no, no shortage of people to tell them what to do. <laughs> so uh, there are people who uh, think I'm, they see deep in their heart, I'm smarter than the average person, I have more answers than the average person. There are people out there and they always, it's just out there. They can't actually name any most of the time, but they're just out there, um, who they can't make these decisions for themselves. They're too silly or too ignorant or really informed or dumb or whatever. And, and these people think, um, well, these decisions have to be taken away from them and made for their own good. Yeah. And then, then they'll convince the politicians and the advisors and the uh, senior bureaucrats and so forth, this is a good policy initiative. Public health, one of the worst ones, mm. Um, you know, we are on the verge of having plain labelling for alcohol, um, yeah. uh, you know, warnings about fatty food mm. and so forth. All That's my favourite, is, is the traffic light system to, to tell you that a packet of twisties is not a naturally occurring phenomenon. Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. So, you, you know, you're too silly to work that out for yourself. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, ignorance is, is, you know, a sort of a grey area and, and there is an argument, I'm not sure I totally believe it, there is an argument that says the government's allowed to inform you, so it's not a good idea to drink too much, good, not a good idea to smoke, um, are, you know, you shouldn't live on, on chips and yeah. twisties all day. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that, but once they've told you, my view is that's the end of it. But, but the nanny state goes further and says, well, no, um, you're actually too silly to make a, a good choice. Because obviously, you know, if, if, if left to our own devices, mm -hmm. be interesting to see where the world goes, but there was obviously a time when um, either our, no our, our knowledge catches up to say, well, this, this thing we keep doing is wrong, is bad, and results in bad health outcomes or bad social outcomes, so let's, let's fix it or harm minimise it or whatever the, the proper term is. But then you get this feeling that once they've solved that problem, the person who solved that problem needs to come up with something else to do for seven and a half hours a day, for five days a week, for 52 weeks a year, and then essentially we're inventing problems in order so somebody gets paid to solve them. Yeah, uh, you can use cigarette advertising as an example, or, or, or not just cigarette advertising, restrictions on, on where you can smoke. Mm. Um, so the original idea was cigarette advertising caused young people to smoke. Um, so then they took it away from times when young people supposedly watch TV. Mm. But then they said, oh, no, that's not going far enough, and it's influencing adults anyway, so we've got to stop that. Then they said, um, you're not allowed to smoke so that other people breathe in your secondary smoke. There's a case for that. Secondary smoke can make people sick. Nowhere near as often as they said, but you know, you can't deny that, that that's a risk. So then, so that secondary smoke was, was got rid of. There was no respect for property rights in that, so 
a restaurant owner or a pub uh, proprietor couldn't say, well, I'm going to put a sign on the door and say, smoking is permitted in here, come in at your own risk. Mm. Uh, you know, voluntary assumption of risk, as the lawyers say, yeah. was never entertained. It was, no, let's stop it. Mm. But now we've gone, so, so the people who achieved that had seven and a half hours left in a day to, um, to carry on. Yeah. So what, what next? Well, we can't, we don't really approve of smoking. And that's where it got into, well, now you're not allowed to smoke outside in bus shelters. Why? You're not actually hurting anybody else. Well, you might annoy them. They might, like, they might pick up the whiff of your cigarette yeah, and, yeah, and they yeah. might be annoyed. It's not going to cause them any illness, but, but um, yeah. and it, it, eventually it comes down to just straight a, a disapproval. That's all it is. I don't like what you're doing. You shouldn't be doing it. It's an unwise thing to do. And, you know, that may be ca the case. It may be unwise. Therefore, that's enough justification to stop you from doing it. We, we see that now in, um, in the prisons. Um, there was a, a riot in Victoria when they stopped cigarette smoking. Mm. And um, I wouldn't be at all surprised if there's uh, something similar happens in New South, New South Wales, Wales as a result of... But, see, an example of something that was highlighted this week that, as I presume an example of nanny state, is the idea of bicycle helmets on, on push bikes. Mm. Now, as, as best as I've always known, that was a great idea because you have to wear the helmet because if you fell off the bike and you hit your head, it's a way of protecting yourself. Mm -hmm. um, convince me otherwise. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the rest of the world doesn't agree with Australia or New Zealand that the risk is so severe that it should be a compulsory thing. So that, that's the issue, is it, should it be compulsory? Whether or not it's a good idea to uh, wear a helmet um, when you're riding a bicycle, uh, that's a matter of judgment. If you're just um, pottering down to the shops, I suspect it, it's not that big a deal. If you're in a road race, um, I think it probably is a very legitimate thing to do. But the question is, um, if it's common sense to do it, why is it compulsory? Does the government uh, have a monopoly on common sense? Does it have more common sense than the rest of us? In Europe, there are bicycles everywhere. They use them to commute and get around and all sorts of, uh, all sorts of reasons. You see very few um, helmets. Um, occasional, occasional ones, um, but the, the, uh, the only place you do see them sort of with any frequency is on little kids. Now that's fantastic because first of all there's more reason to put them on little kids because little kids' heads are more vulnerable. They're also more wobbly on bikes and more prone to fall off and take risks and, mm. and have poor judgment. But also it reflects the fact that parents are taking responsible for their kids. That's a far better way of dealing with these things than having the state say, if you don't wear a helmet, I'm going to fine you. But maybe, I mean, okay, if the rest of the world's not doing it, but maybe Australia somehow has discovered it first, has discovered the reason to do this first. Mm. Um, so this is always the thing. I'm always a little concerned when people say we should do something because the rest of the world is doing it, or we shouldn't because the rest of the world isn't. Hey, I, I'm sympathetic to that point of view myself. But the, uh, all the arguments are that there's nowhere near enough uh, injuries from, uh, uh, from falling off bikes to to justify such a coercive uh, th uh, thing. It also discourages people from riding bicycles. Mm. They've got to have a helmet and their bike together at the same time. It's, it's basically meant hi uh, bicycle hire services uh, are not, not feasible because the helmet can't be handled. The bike can, they can put it in a little lock and you put a, a token in and get the bike out. But what do you do with the helmet, you know? Mm. Nobody carries a helmet around. How do you put that in some kind of dispenser, you know? Yeah. Nobody wants to wear someone else's helmet anyway. Correct. They don't know what they might catch. Correct. So there's all, there are issues like that. And, and um, from my point of view, my party's point of view, Liberal Democrats and our libertarian perspective, we also argue that it's just not uh, the role of government to pre prevent you from making bad choices. Mm. Even if we all agreed it's really smart to wear a helmet, even if everybody said it's a good idea. You know? So last one here. If, when you're in Canberra, you're, it, you're literally at the capital of uh, politicians wanting to be seen to be doing something, the lobbyists forcing them to do so. Um, are there times where you sit opposite and say, well, the reason I'm not going to support this is because there's no need for this. Yes. Oh, regularly. Yeah, regularly. <laughs> and they just look at you. Do you speak a different language to them at times? A number of them. I have some sympathisers um, in the Liberal Party. Yeah. Um, the Greens think I'm from Mars. Um, <laughs> uh, there's a few in the Labor Party, not very many, a few in Labor who know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And they have kind of 
liberal tendencies, although when they get onto economics, it all falls apart. Yeah. And in the Libs, um, oh, there's probably uh, 10 or 20 of them that are uh, sort of somewhat sympathetic to my point of view, except they always have blind spots. They all say, well, I'm a libertarian when it comes to, say, bicycle helmets, but not smoking. Oh, no, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's too serious. You, know, you can't leave that to people to, yeah. for their own choices. Yeah. But I mean, and the then you say, buffet, as yeah. they say. What about bungee jumping? What about skydiving? What about uh, base jumping? Yeah. You know, they're all risky, uh, perhaps dangerous, uh, not wise to do. Uh, we don't ban them, but I think if, if ever a couple of people got killed in short order and there was a bit of a fuss, the politicians should do something, they probably would do it. And it's gone, it. gone straight away. Or plain packaging on bungee ropes or whatever happens. Exactly, yeah. Senator, lovely to talk to you. May we continue the conversation? Thank All you best. very much. David Lionhelm there. Uh, I love just the common sense. At least there's somebody who's willing to argue it in Canberra. Quick break, back with more.